Hey there and welcome to a new Blender tutorial where I'm going to show you the best way to get caustics into your scene. Now it, this is by far the most realistic way of doing it but it's also by far the slowest method. Is it practical? Probably not. Uh, well at least not for animations. For still renders it's still debatable but um I'm going to quickly show you a few examples of uh, what I actually mean when I say the best way of getting caustics because, you know, the standard Blender way of doing that with a new like caustic thing that you have to enable in your scene properties and with your camera, that is basically okay. It doesn't look as good as it should, but uh, then I also made a video on how to fake it. It also looks better than the original Blender one, I think, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look really realistic compared to what you see on your screen right now. And it's actually very, very easy to do. You don't have to set up anything in your material. Basically comes right out of the box, a box with two settings changed. So as you can see, we have a few things and uh, basically the method that Blender offers you is uh, only shadow caustics. I'm going to show you how to get the refractive and the reflective caustics everywhere in your scene so basically we have a few glass objects let me just turn on the, uh, the shaded view so as you can see we have a few glass objects here like uh, all of this here and we have this metal ring here uh, which will come in handy later well once we render this let me just quickly show you speed is always relative I'm going to enable my denoiser. I thought it is already enabled. Uh, so basically, as you can see right here, nothing is really happening. We're not getting any caustics calculated. Uh, let me just show you one part of it. So it renders faster. As you can see, we are expecting some caustics to uh, occur here. As you can see, we get a slight bright spot right here where we would expect the caustics to form. But uh, there's nothing really happening, right? So uh, what is the deal with that? So basically, uh, right now with Blender default settings, you will not be able to achieve caustics very well. That is because fireflies are suppressed and caustics are basically small little fireflies when we, when we really think, think about it. And that is just small concentrated beams of light that are a lot above the average. Uh, at least a lot above the average uh, value of light here we get in our scene and that is getting kind of muted when we think about this uh, it with this filter glossy setting here now you will find this in your render properties once you turn on uh, off the filter glossy you will see that first of all the ground becomes a lot more realistic if, well at least in some form and that you actually get some slight sharp thing here as you can see before it was just a bright blob now we can see a very very small thing happening right over here which is indicating indicating that we are getting at least a little bit of a caustic but now why is it so dim why is it so small uh, that comes because of another setting that uh, is suppressing the caustics and that is the indirect light so while this here was smoothing it into a blodge, this here is actually restricting the brightness from occurring. So once we set this here to 10, or it should be by, uh, 10 by default, it will suppress every bit of light coming in that is larger than some amount that is being valued by this here. So if we were to set this to some higher number, like 3000, uh, you would see that we are getting some caustics happening here but the most realistic way of getting things to happen is when you set it to zero so basically zero is like infinity like um once you set it to one it's going to be very dim but once you set it to zero it's going to treat it like there is no restriction at all and as you can see with just a few samples like 600 samples 700 we are getting caustics happening right here and they are really bright they really show up well we also get some here which i think before we didn't even see or didn't even get because they were either too dim or they were just smoothed out way too much now if i was to say let's just see how many samples we're at 
we can try and denoise this. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, let me just set this to like 1000. So it will automatically denoise. And yeah, as you can see, we are getting a real result over here. Uh, now, that really works well for every sort of caustic. Not just the refractive, but also the reflective. Which I will show you in just a bit. Just let me render this out in quick mode for you. So, and as you can see, it rendered out quite nicely. We have a little tiny caustic over here, a fairly large one here, then another small one here, and this spherical thing that is also producing a caustic right at the bottom of it. So, as I said, this is great. But as you can see, my sample size was, was at 16,000 samples. So really, it takes a very, very long time, multiple hours per frame, and it still isn't great. So I would suggest keeping this at a very large number if you actually plan on using refractive caustics with glass, because it's going to take a very, very large amount of samples even with denoising to actually get a clear result. So even with a thousand samples, you can see this sphere here is kind of wonky at the edges. So yeah, it just takes a little bit of time to actually do its magic. Let me just zoom in on this here so I can show you the reflective caustics. They should render a little bit faster with the smaller boundary and you can already see them being formed. As the light comes in from this side here, we also have a stronger light from here, uh, but from this side it's more noticeable. You can see how it's hitting the edges of the ring and actually making this pattern right here. Now we also get this from, from this side, it's not very noticeable, but here you can see it quite well, how the light is being thrown around into this sharp point over here, and then it just slowly clings back in, which has to do a lot with the positioning of the light, with the positioning of the model, and the shininess of the model. If I was to make this a lot more rough, uh, that is the wrong material. If I was to make this like 0.6, you would see that we wouldn't actually be getting anything happening right over here, which also affects the glass, right? If you make it uh, a lot rougher, you're not going to get anything. And uh, yeah, just have that in mind when trying to get this. Actually, the roughness of your object matters quite a bunch. So yeah, I hope uh, you like this and you found it informative. Those are the two go-to settings that you need to change for realistic caustics. And uh, yeah, bear in mind, it's going to take a long time, especially when you're rendering on a CPU. But uh, yeah, if you want the best result, that is the best result. Now you have to value your time. You have to value the amount of money that you're going to get out of this if you're selling this. Uh, but yeah, if you just want to try it, try it out. But if you actually need it for a customer animation, I wouldn't really suggest using this. There is a lot of other render engines which actually do produce caustics. Uh, quite well, just like Luxcore, which you even can make animations with. It's also a pain, but it takes less time and less pain to get uh, an animation working. So yeah, without any further ado, that would be it. I hope you found this informative and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.